Hi, everyone. Welcome to the 16th episode of Conceptualism. I have with me here today Alex Belgard, who is a bass player, uh, an explorer of sound, uh, and also a teacher of music. Thank you for being here with us. Thanks for having me, man. So I guess uh, I want to start by by talking about uh, where we first met, which is uh, Diazons, uh, yeah. you know, the jazz club in uh, Montreal, where you host a, a legendary jam session uh, every Tuesday. Um, not in COVID times, but obviously yeah. before. It yeah. was, uh, you know, it was really interesting because you got a whole plethora of, of musicians, you know, everyone from, you know, complete amateurs to like the most seasoned professionals and, uh, and everybody in between. And uh, yeah, I, that's where I first met you. And it was, uh, it was really interesting, you know. Yeah, that was one of the reasons I, I started a jam session in the first place, you know, is to have a spot where, you know, musicians can meet. Uh, without being on a gig because uh, if not it becomes difficult for uh, people who are known to like hook up you know and make connections and uh, I started playing jazz by seeing a movie with a jam session flick so that would be it became my life mission well I'm very glad I'm very glad and you're all you're also open to unusual instrumentations because I remember um, I came down to Diazon's uh, with my tabla and yeah. uh, and you know and I wanted to I wanted to sit in on the jam session, and I was almost I was almost sure that you know that that you know there there would be no way for for that to you know to happen. But you were like, yeah, you got tabla, bring them on stage. You know, it's like yeah. this, there's like this I don't know this openness to um, to like explore other musical traditions that are not that are not really jazz. But I mean, at the same time, North Indian music is kind of like jazz, you know, because improvisation well, is such a big part. Well, that's, yeah, that's what I was going to come at, too, is like jazz for me is, is a connection of multiple languages. And, if, you know, and if, if you're going to close the door and say this or this can't or can, then I think you, you didn't get the point. You know, it's a, it's a so I always thought it's, it's good to be open up. And to be able to have connections, you know, that it, it permitted us to connect in a way, you know. If, if I would have said no, who knows, we would have never even uh, met each other. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, exactly. And you're right, because jazz is that interconnected thing, you know. It's, it's this giant umbrella and, you know, people that claim to say this is what jazz is or this is what jazz isn't. You know, you could call them purists, maybe they, you know, I think, I think they're actually doing a disservice to jazz because ironically, like, I mean, one of the greatest jazz musicians ever, uh, Miles Davis didn't even think of himself as a jazz musician. He just saw himself as a musician. Yeah, you know? I agree. I tend to agree with that point of view. You know? yeah. um, we can't really label. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I say we can't really label ourselves. You know, I, I think we we're all musicians and, and we, we have something to say. You know, and uh, we use our different backgrounds of languages to say it. So. Yes. Yes. Well, and then, and then, you know, I went, when I, I, when I, when we jammed, you know, that first time at Diazons, you know, I said to you, you know, I want to have a jam session with you uh, and, you know, record it. And uh, you yeah. kept, you kept me guessing for a very long time. <laughs> you know, I, th I think, I think it was, it was like four, four and a half months or five months, you know, before that actually finally happened. Um, yeah. You know, and uh, partially because you're so busy, but like, I think you also wanted me to, to earn it, I think as well, like you wanted to see like if I would, I don't know, if I would come to more jam sessions, if I would, you know, continue being dedicated, something like that. Well, I, well that, you know, that's part of it. I, I, I'm not really a school guy, you know, I've never learned in any university or schools, but yeah. I kind of learned through old musicians, mm. kind of uh, queuing me out in the same kind of way. And, uh, you know, there's a way to say, to see if, you know, guys, what, if they really into it, or it's just like a little fling, fast, fast. And, you know, I learned that way and I always thought it was a good way because it's, it's a nice way. And if, and if someone is really interested in pursuing any project, well, that time, you know, they'll continue to want to do it, even if it's not today, which is good to be able to wait for stuff sometimes too, also. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Absolutely. Yeah, because we live in this age of instant gratification. So I think patience and, uh, and, and perseverance are, are very, very important. Uh, yeah. skills to, to instill. Yeah. I agree. I agree. 
Um, so tell me, tell me about the bass that the bass that you play. I mean, you have a few basses, but you've got uh, like, um, what's your primary acoustic bass that you play? Well, I actually only have one now. I used to have two, but I okay. I, I found it very difficult to own two basses uh, because uh, the bass. Well, maybe it's me perceiving it as a as an entity, and I couldn't you know I, I commit my love to this one instrument and then switch to the other one and then have another feel and and, so, and at one point I'm like no this is not happening so I have one instrument and then dedicate all to the, that sound of that instrument you know learning how to play it so, so I only have one now and it's the big lion bass which you know but she, she she's a she's a very fancy little queen and keeps me in line you know so. <laughs> Well, and, yeah. and, and we were talking, um, and you were telling me that the importance of keeping the calluses on your fingers. So you have to yeah. constantly, you constantly practice because otherwise, mm -hmm. otherwise you lose your, uh, your sound. Well, that, that's actually uh, one of the challenges I uh, found this uh, pandemic has brought. Because, uh, I mean, practicing is not a big issue because I've been at home and have a lot of time to practice. But, but the actual playing... It's not happening so much anymore, and it's really not the same physical, you know, the way you play if you're practicing at home or if you're playing in an ensemble yes. together being pushed by other musicians, right? So uh, that's been an issue, and I've uh, found that I have to really keep it up no matter what. So I have to have, be having sessions to be able to physically uh, keep up the bass sound, the endurance and uh, finger-wise and, uh, you know, m also mentally. You know, to be able to listen to someone else. It, it seems, you know, uh, normal because we've been doing it forever. But now not being there, when you come back, you realize, wow, okay. You know, I'm not just by myself. I have to pay attention to what this person is saying all the time. Especially if you're going to do like more improvised music. Yes. Where you, where you know that demands a lot more concentration because you have to be constantly on your toes. Yes. Uh, paying attention to what's happening and you know, what's being said from the other musicians. You know? For sure. So yeah, so that is definitely a, a major issue, you know, right now. <laughs> so, but uh, it's okay. We're on, we're on it. But yeah, it's a physical thing, and you have to really keep on shape. And there's a few instruments like that. I mean, I know if you play tabla, you know that, and it's a, it's a physical side to it that need, that needs to be maintained. Because you know? yeah. you, your brain doesn't ever forget what you've learned, but to be able to execute it demands, uh, you know, a constant. Uh, Okay, I should say to, to keep the constant playing. Yes, for sure, for sure. Yeah, you're right. I mean, uh, at a certain point, you know, it, it is muscle memory, but you have to keep those muscles active because yeah. other, otherwise they'll atrophy. Just, just yeah. like just like anything else. Like if, you know, if you're in a coma for five months and you, and then you, yeah. you, know, and then you try running a marathon, I mean, you're not going to be able to. Uh, oh, that, yeah, that's the point I was going to say. You know, like a runner can't expect to do a 20k marathon if he doesn't do any kind of running for months before you know even if he knows how it's done yes well and that's that's part of living in the physical universe you have to deal with the the physicality of things because it's not just no. the mind it's not all it's not all in you know yeah yeah, that's a, yeah. <laughs> damn i thought it was all in the mind <laughs> Well, would you would think that, wouldn't you? Yeah, right. I mean, you can't really see now, but okay, I'll give you a peek. You see? No, I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> well, um, do you do you remember that that uh, that session that um, that little gig that we played at that cafe? Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean that that was that was, that was, that was, that was, that was hilarious because like literally two people showed up to that, but that was. Like, like, man, that, that was probably one of the hardest gigs I ever played. Cause like, you know, I was sitting on the hardwood floor, you know, cross-legged and we played for almost two and a half hours. So like by the end of it, I was completely like exhausted, you know? Yeah. 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 Well, that comes to show that's the, that's the side, the physical side where, where I say, you know, we, we have that, that needs to be maintained because as you see, it is still pretty difficult. Even if our minds can go with the music all day long. You know, when you're sitting on this on somewhere or standing on a stage or, or in a physical position and you're performing for an hour or two, you know, if you, if you don't practice, it becomes super hard, you know, like as you remember when we did that gig. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and our, our recording, I think it's called Journeying. It's, 
it's still up there on I think on SoundCloud or something. And uh, oh, yeah. and and you know I remember there were all these like other toys that you had you know in your studio, um, like uh, different kinds of bells and percussions and like all kinds of interesting things. Yeah. You know. Well, I like all the sounds, and you know, like as you mentioned before, there's a you know sound exploration is is pretty interesting. You know, I've uh, you know I'm not an old guy, but I'm still like from the '70s generation. So I, I remember watching Disney shows where a lot of the sound effects were made by one guy in the studio with all this kind of stuff. You know, and he'd have to figure out how to get this sound with a piece of metal and a hammer or something like that. You know. So uh, I, I find that's very interesting to see what kind of sounds you can pull out of various instruments, you know, especially with an upright bass where, you know, it can play as a bass, but it's still a big acoustic hollow body and you can make all these different sounds with it. Sure. You know, you open it and stuff. Well, and, and there's also yeah. the percussive side, like, you know, you can play yeah. slap, slap bass, you can use the bass as a percussion. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. to Avishai Cohen does, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's very, so you have to just open your mind. So that's the reason having all that stuff is, you know, I also like, like, you know, like to, to create like, uh, you know, the portraits musically. So it's nice to have all these different objects to, to bring colors. You know. Well, I, I just, uh, I, I just bought um, a, a little kalimba, um, uh, like yesterday, I think just arrived yeah. and and um and it was tuned into a c major scale and i was like that's so vanilla so now now i i use the tuning tool and i i changed the whole thing so now it's all microtonal and uh, no way. And, yes. and, and 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 you know and it's hilarious because on each of the tines you know the, it's that note it's written c d e f g whatever and and now of course the tuning is like so off like it, it sounds uh, you know it, it sounds really weird and interesting it has so much character uh, yeah. so, so, you know, I, and I knew the second that I played it, that it like, it sounded too pure. It had no character. So I was like, I've got to mess with this. So, and, and I, I feel like you do that too. Like, you know, you, you, you sort of, you play in between the notes. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like yeah. I remember, <clears throat> I remember there was one section where you were using the bow, uh, and you were playing like microtonal inflections. It almost sounded like yeah. a raga and, and, yeah. and it was really beautiful. And like, uh, yeah. And I was like, this guy, you know, he listens to a lot of interesting stuff because, like, you know, you weren't you weren't playing, you weren't playing what I, what I expected, you know, a bass player to play. You were you were you were you know you were like you were blending like a sitar with like a harmonium with like, you know, I don't know, like it was like you you were you were in a different sound world, you know, even yeah. Though well, the well, as you, as you mentioned, I do like to listen to a lot of music, you know, which is, I think is very important. You know, I like it just, and and when I it's that way, if I do get into a certain color of a certain world of music, you know, like my brain has kind of references, you know, which is well, as you mentioned, when I was playing the bass, I wasn't thinking I'm playing a bass. I was thinking I'm making a sitar drone sound, you know, mix of a, as you mentioned, you know, which is to, to get those sounds. So uh, yeah. And the bass, fortunately, is awesome because it's one of those instruments where you can do microtones because there's no frets, right? Yes. So, uh, so which is which is cool. And you also have another bass, which is like kind of like an electric bass, but it's like an electric upright bass, and you use it yeah. to, play, to play your your Cuban music stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's a Latin, Latin baby bass. Uh, some people know it as a conga bass. No, because okay. it's a very, it's a you know, it's a very muted sound in, the, in electric, so you, you can use it in another context. So uh, me, obviously, when I got it, I had to rethink in my mind. You know, obviously, it's played as a bass; it's still a bass. You know, strings tune the the bass lines, but there's little details where the reason why it's a conga bass is is you you blend in like the Latin music and have. Um, have the percussive you know sound so like a conga so which is i finally figured out all these years starting to, to learn that instrument and get it to have that sound you know and you're like oh so so it's very cool to have that i mean i guess maybe in the same way as, as a piano player would have a keyboard and an acoustic piano you know they're still the same instruments the same notes but the sounds different and the usage can be uh can be different for sure for sure, yeah. yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and um, yeah, and and like you said, like it it depends on the context, because I mean, you you know, 
you might not use the conga bass to play straight ahead jazz, you know? Um, mm. It's possible, but, you know, it's like, I don't know, there's there's a particular context where a keyboard, oh, yeah. you know, a keyboard might make more sense than, say, a piano, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, so it's nice to have that. And also, you know, for me, it made sense because when I started playing Latin music, I didn't have a uh, conga bass like that. I just played on upright bass because it is doable. Mm -hmm. But, you know, with learning it, you know, I, I realized that if I, you know, want to deepen into that genre, you know, more, I had to acquire that kind of bass to, to really understand, you know, the, the deepness of it because that's the thing with music it always seems so simple when you hear it and you do it you're like oh that's not hard you know it's two chords sure you know indian music is the proof you know there's sometimes there's one chord ish and you know and it sounds huge but if you think of it you're like well how am i supposed to make one chord sound good for 50 minutes you know <laughs> like but it's the same with Latin music, you know, you, it's simple, but you, there's these little subtleties that make it like, if you really want to get that pure sound, yeah. but you have to understand that little stuff, you know? And you're right, because like there, there's, there's things like the space and the, you know, the space between the notes, the, the way the groove moves, there's a, there's a certain, like if you can tell if somebody's faking it or if someone's trying to approximate it, because you've got to, yeah. really you've got to live the music in order for it to be authentic. Yeah. I think so. I think so. Which is the reason why in Latin music, I, I started to learn Spanish and learn the lyrics and say, oh, well, this is what they're saying in this tune, you know, and oh, because, you know, at the beginning, I'm like, oh, yeah, like, this is really fun groove. But, but then you understand sometimes what's behind it also, it helps you maybe play the song better. I mean, you don't have to do all that stuff, you know, we both know that, but but I always find it helps you to, to, to get into the music world of whatever you're playing better. For sure, for sure. Yeah, because um, yeah, I mean, music is, uh, you know, inherently and inextricably tied with culture, you know? Yeah, so, no, for sure, no, for sure. So, so we, can't, we can't really, we can't dichotomize music from the culture because when you do that, then suddenly there's, there's no, there's, you're, yeah, you're in a vacuum. You need, you need, oh, yeah. you need the culture yeah. in order to give the music meaning. Well, I think so. You know, and even if you're not going to do the purest, purest, I mean, I don't like that word, but let's say, you know, pure culture, ex genre, you know, if you're going to do that, it, it, you know, is you still need to learn to learn it a bit, you know, to, 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 to not get over pure. I lost my thought. Been a long day. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. No worries. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, I wanted to ask you about, uh, um, you know, like the the teachers, you know, that you had along the way, like the, you know, the mentors, the the sort of the mm. master musicians that have, you know, that have shaped your your approach and your sound and like even like even the life lessons, you know, that that you've learned through music. I want. I, I was wondering if you could tell us about that. Well, um, one of my first influences for bass, you know, was uh, uh, Skip Bay, which is an old bass player who's lived in Montreal. And uh, he ran jam session for years, and I met him in a jam session. And, you know, he was a master, he ne but he never got, you know, he was a bar player. You know, he wasn't, he didn't have anything to be on a big stage or stuff like that. You know? He was really a club player. And, and uh, he, he, he got me when I was young. You know, and I was learning scales and coming into the jam session and and uh, trying to show off and like, oh, okay, oh, I got to really shine right now. You know, I'm going to play, you know, and he learned me that music is not about you. You know, you don't shine going on the stage thinking about yourself. You know, you shine going on the stage when you make everyone else shine, you know. And, and that, that's the life lesson that these old guys taught me. And they never told me because, you know, you know how it is. We're young and cocky and we know everything, you know. And, uh, you know, if this old guy says, no, oh, you have to do it this way, you're going to go like, yeah, right, old guy. I, yeah, I'm going to do it my way or the highway, you know. <laughs> you know, but then they, so these, these guys were really good because he, he, he'd never have to say it. He'd, he'd be, I'd be in this situation and he'd be like, <laughs> It, I'd live it and he'd be like well you know you should play with your heart you know you know try you know you don't need all that scale crap you know and he says just, just you shine like a rainbow you know and I'm like what 
and these in these old guys saw it because they saw it that I love music. You know, they probably wouldn't tell everybody, but you know, old musicians can see the spark of a young musician. You know, and they know even if he's not at his best spot, that you know, no, this guy has it. And he has the spark. So it's just it's a question of being, you know, shown the good the, the path. You know. <laughs> So, so, so he would do that, and he put me in a position like, "Oh, you want a jam?" And because in the beginning, I was like, "Sure, yeah, Rainbow," you know, <laughs> I don't want to sound like this guy, you know. And so he put me on stage, and then he'd say, "Well, no, you have to learn that. This, if you don't want to play, you have to learn your basics," you know. And, and I'd be, "Yeah, right, I can play." And then he'd put me up with Vic Vogel, who was another old, you know, old guy in town who would really show you the old style. And he wouldn't even tell you the song. He'd say, oh, just check my fingers. Like, what are you playing? Well, just look at my hands. And I'm like, oh, my God, I didn't even know how to play piano. You know? So so that was a good lesson. And I went home and Skip said, yeah, I told you, you know, learn your tunes, son. <laughs> <laughs> you, know. you know, that's after doing one bar and being uh, politely told that I, could, I should get off the stage right now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, you, you, that's funny. Cause like, you know, th there's the times when, when, you know, you're playing with somebody and, you know, and, th and they'll say, you know what, it's time for you to shut up or like, or cut the solo yeah. short, you know, or whatever, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. and, and there's like, there's this whole language, which is like, you know, someone will just give you a look and you'll be like, ah, shit, I got to shut up now, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, we, you know, we all learn. And and it's good because I learned that way, and I think that's a very good school. You know, you can't learn that in school classroom. You know, no, practicing you're you're practicing with your buddies. You know, and they're like digging whatever you do, and, and, and it's just not the same. You know, as going up on the stage with people who have way more experience, but still they want to come and play with younger people. You know, that's right there. You have to be very modest and say, "Listen, I'm lucky right now." <laughs> you know. <laughs> Well, and, you and know, but they, you know they all learn like that. You know, music forever has been that way. You know, mm -hmm. even if you if you think of the beginning of music, like from African roots, you know, there was no classroom. You know, it was the elders who would teach the story of the village through music, through language. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's how the history and the culture was taught from generation down. You know, indeed. So. You know, so. Well, it is, it is, it is the historic model. It is a tried and true model. I mean, the master and apprentice model is, is the one that I most identify with a hundred percent. Oh, you know? oh yeah. Cause, cause I mean, the way that I learned, you know, is by studying the masters and whether they're mm -hmm. alive or whether they're alive or dead doesn't, I mean, okay, it matters because obviously when someone's alive, you can have a conversation with them, you know? Yeah. Um, but I would say even even just by studying the you know the the work of the people that have come before, yeah. you know, you're, yeah. you're able to gain an insight into the way that they yeah. thought, into the yeah. you know, yeah. what mattered to them, because it's about yeah. the values too. Because you you know oh, yeah. you know it's it's about it's like what what did they care about? What was important to them? Yeah, that's very important too. You know, especially because uh, you know you being an artist also, Afraz, you know you know how. Uh, it can be uh, mentally challenging on some days uh, to believe that you can actually you're doing a proper job or <laughs> or how you how come you have no gigs in your calendar for the next uh, the 28 days what are you going to do you know but you know all those kind of little things i mean i've i've seen old people who've always managed to make me feel better you know and and that's very important in our business it's not just about learning your instrument you know it's about someone who's been working for 50 years and he and you're stressed and like oh what am i gonna do i have no gigs and then this old guy looks at you and he says hey man i'm still here you know and 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 you're like what and it, what it means is like bro just do your thing you know get keep on going every day you know you're gonna you know, look i'm i'm 50 I'm, i've been doing this like for 40 years i'm still here you know I mean, there's been rough times yeah but just keep going so yes it is very important to be open to that you know? well and you know that also brings up the question of access because like you know not everybody necessarily has access to you know no. uh, to, to these opportunities to, you know, to to learn from these masters so yeah. I, and yeah. also like when it comes to like okay so you know i play the pipe organ so a lot of see a lot of people, uh, especially musicians who, who, you know, who play, you know, an instrument like guitar, flute, bass, whatever, you own your instrument. Whereas as an organist, you don't own the instrument. It's not. Yeah, yeah. 
It's not yours. So it puts you in a position of insecurity where you have well, to- Unless you own a church, you know. That's right. Unless you own a church or you own a concert hall, whatever. Um, but you see, there's a guy called Cameron Carpenter who built his own instrument called the International Touring Organ. Um, I think I might have mentioned him to you before. Um, and like, it's a digital pipe organ. And he owns that outright now. Um, so like that gives you a certain security. So, uh, so I guess what I'm saying is like being an artist, you know, there are insecurities. There are things that we have to deal with that, that, you know, sometimes it's not in our control or sometimes it's not something that we can, you know, that, that we can say, okay, I want it to be this way. And then it's going to be this way. You have to sort of work around all these, um, these obstacles. And, Mm. and I think that takes a certain tenacity. So, you know, that the way that you tested me, which was that, are you going to still want to do this in, in four months and five months? Like that was also a test of tenacity. Was I still going to hold that, like that intention or whatever. So like, like, I think, um, like, I think, I think being a musician, you know, you have to sort of, there's a certain uh, maybe obsession or a certain uh, commitment that you have to, that you have to have in order to make it go right. I think. Well, that's a, that's a, it's a good point there. And that's something where the old guys would, would definitely teach me like like what, what i live what you live with me i remember living with my mentor you know like going to his jam session like uh, four weeks in a row and being no bass players and he wouldn't let me come up and on I, and and i was like what the you know there's nobody i mean why i mean and i was so eager to play like oh, let me play you know and but the, he was like no you know what you're a little too eager to play you don't get it it's not about you just sit down and listen you know, and and then I'd be pissed off and leave, and then and then say I'm not coming back ever. You know, and then go home and like, no, I'm not. What do you mean? I'm I'm going back. I love it. I want to go and see it again. You know, and so I'd go back, and then they'd not get me go up again. I was still too eager, but I'd still hang out, do the hang, and not think about me. And then and then he let me play again. You know, and eventually, now all these years later, I get it. You know. I, I get it, but at the time I didn't get it. You know, I was like, "What the hell? What are you doing? Why am we sitting down?" You know, and even after spending two weeks and thinking, "Okay, it's not about," I'd still be there where, like, "Oh, my solo needs to be more better, or it has to shine, or I need to this or that." You know, but it's so—I mean, that's so anti-musical when you think about it. You know, if the, if you have to be selfless to make the best music. Because this, the right. student, the, yeah, you know, the minute you stop thinking about yourself, then the music really starts to shine. You know? Yeah, yeah, because it's the idea that we're channels. You know, we're we're not yeah. like it comes from it comes from that humility, which is saying that, like you yeah. said, it's not about me. It's like I'm channeling something. You know. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. like if the ocean is the source and you're a fountain, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's yeah. like. You know, but it's easy to it's easy to say you know we're discussing but we both know you and i that it's very easy to say but sometimes to get it down and to actually get to that level of i guess we could say maturity sure you know sure. musical maturity is is you know is, is a long journey it is. which is very which is very cool because it makes me feel as an older musician a more safe because you know we also see these young cats who come up are like amazing and you're like oh no you know this guy's like 17 and he kicks ass and you know and he's gonna take all the work and blah, blah, blah. but you know in actual fact it's not true because you can't beat that journey you know this, this the journey is there and like it like you know all these old mentors and through times you know you can't just jump ahead you have to do it you know absolutely absolutely you're yeah, right and yeah. you're right because like you know you see you see these kids that have got chops for days but then you know mm-hmm. when when you when you put them in a situation which is slightly outside their comfort zone suddenly they're you know they they're they're, they're they don't know what to do whereas you know you put somebody mm-hmm. who's got 50 years of experience on the stage and you throw a curveball at them you know they'll handle it they have the grace to yeah. handle it you know um, yeah, they, they've they, they've got it before. They had a curveball before, you know, and so yeah. So yeah, no, there, there's no there's there's no way of getting around the fact that that you know that it takes time to to become a a a a, a fully matured or you know a I like to call it a fully baked musician. Yeah, yes, yeah. so I think my in my my core is still a little liquid though, but the outside is starting to get pretty cooked. <laughs> <laughs> 
well, you know, uh, you know, Rumi. Rumi says that there are the the poet. You know, uh, the Sufi master Rumi. He says that you know there are three stages. Um, you you know first first you you get uh, I think you get cooked, uh, and then and then you get burnt. I think. Uh, and and then and I, and then I think you disappear something something along those lines. But it's basically you know the the journey towards you know becoming one with everything. You know you have to you have to basically be tempered like or or cooked in this fire, and mm. and you could call it like the fire of longing or the fire of wanting to be you know at that level or to be great or whatever. But at the same time, like you know it's interesting because the people that really have that drive to you know to be great suddenly they realize, you know, wait a minute, you know, once I am great and I'm acknowledged and everybody thinks I'm, I'm a master, then where does that leave me? Like what, you know, then what am I going to do? Um, so I guess, I guess there's then that idea of being a perpetual student. Cause like, even at your age, you know, you, I'm sure you, you, you know, the oh. of, you know always, oh, well, just, always, always. Oh learn. yeah. And the day you think you have nothing left to learn is over. So if you need, you know, hang up your gloves, you know, because, you know, that's the thing is the older you get, the more, you know, you don't know anything, you know, and you're like, wow, <laughs> which is a nice feeling. I mean, I enjoy it. I mean, I, for me, who likes, first of all, likes that feeling of not knowing, first of all, in life and not just in music, you know, so, so I enjoy that just thinking that, Hey, I don't know anything. And, you know, cool <laughs> i can learn and figure stuff up and meet people and go to sleep wake up in the morning and be in a bad mood and then just learn something amazing in the day and like wow that was so, yeah, it makes it makes so, it all worth it. so yeah i think so you know i think so yeah. um, i want to ask you about uh, casa obscura you know the 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 the, the art yeah. collective the, the space in, in montreal you know, I was very lucky that I, I got to play a show there. Also came to a lot of jazz yeah. sessions, you know, and yeah, that, yeah. that that was, oh, man, that oh, that space alone made made coming to Montreal worth it. And, and you know, I feel like I had to earn that space because, like, you know, it's not like you just know about it. It's not like, you know, you, or, you know, no. you just get invited. Like, it, like I think, no. I, think I, I spent maybe... Uh, maybe two or three months coming to you know to Diazons for the jam sessions every Tuesday, you know, um, and and then one day you know I think it was you that invited me that said you know come along we're going to this you know, the space to hang out it was like an after party and uh, yeah I mean it's really interesting because like when that happened I I was you know I didn't know what to expect you know but you know we arrived and like everybody was like so welcoming and like there was such a community that was like built around you know, around being an artist. And, and that to me was almost more important than all the jam sessions at Diazons. Just that one night coming to oh, Casa Obscura yeah. and seeing that yes. the bonds, the friendships, the relationships, because that's what it's about. Like, that's why we play anyway, is to, to build these. But these the, well, the Casa is a community because it is a, it's a community room, right? Like the Diazons is a club. You know, I actually, I did, I'd had a jam, which is in a club where you're in the business side of it, you know, where or a casa is a collective of artists who, who, who need a place to be able to create art and then, and be, a, I, I can't, I don't know what words to say, but to be, you know, to be somewhere where you're, there's no public is, is very fun. I, I mean, I've always enjoyed that about casa is to go and hang with, with guys in a kind of, barish setting i should say i mean it's not like a club but it reminded me of a of the rooms when i started playing music and played the punk music you know and we used to we used to go hang out in the in in the practice rooms but our practice room was also a hang spot yes you know so we'd go we'd go there and play and jam and then some friends would come and hang there too and it was this bubble where we could just be musicians and no one else you know from the outside would come in you know and it was just art people who understand arts that were there so that casa is kind of that which is why people are a little you know who who are you how did you hear about this place you know when you come in you know it's like what's the secret password no <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I listen, I totally relate to that because the first time that I came in, you know, everybody was like, so who are you? Where are you from? It was like, you know, it was almost like, a, it was almost like, you know, in a university interview when they're like deciding if you're, if you're, you know, if you're, if you're worthy of being admitted into the university, but like this. Well, it is, you know, it, it's the vibe, you know, because, because we're all there, like I said, you know, we're all there to kind of chill, you know. So, you know, you don't want anybody who's who's not really, like we were saying before, not really a, a musician who's not dedicated to that. You know, it's like if you come there, you get that. That's what you do. So you understand. So you're not going to, you know, start annoying some musician like who maybe just wants to be there to chill or whatever. You know, everyone gets it. You know, you're like you can go and play or not. And it's not a problem, you know, you know, so so that's, that's what we that's what we all like about Kazakh. You know, we can also go hang there and, and discuss with other uh, fellow musicians, which is very important. Because, you know, like if you're like, oh, man, I know I have my gigs. It's just been going this, the, this concert. It didn't go well or this venue, that. And then the other guy is just like, really? Oh, me too. You know, I had the exact same experience. And you're like, oh, yeah. And and, and so then, you, you know, it's it, you need to talk to each other between artists sometimes, you know, because you think you're by yourself living certain things and you're the only one. But it's so not true, right? We all live the same thing. So yeah. it's important to have these spaces where we can actually, where you can actually uh, communicate, you know, and talk about that stuff between each other. You know? For sure. Well, and you know, there's another thing that I wanted to bring up about Casa Obscura, which is that the, the um, like, there's a certain environment. Well, first of all, it's a safe space, but at the same time, like, there's also this, like, I don't know, it, I wouldn't call it a pressure, but there's like an expectation that if you're there, that, you know, you must know what you're doing. Like, you know, in a jam session, if you go up there and, you know, I don't know, you start doing some, something like, you know, that's often left field and like i mean it's not that you can't do that but it's just that like you have to have you have to have a certain level of like i don't know like i don't know how to well, say it. you know what well, I, I think it's what a, I, mean? I know i know what you mean but i think on that level that's uh it's it's a people it's a you know it's people skills right because because you know in casa there's a lot of different kinds of music that can happen which is the thing about when there's a session there it's not necessarily something but like in any, uh, you know, social thing, you know, everyone doesn't always get along. You know, uh, sometimes, it, sometimes, you know, you're like, oh, wow, that party was amazing. You know, it was like just the energy was flowing and everyone was laughing and each other's jokes and there was no vibes, you know. But then you can also have the same thing with the same people. And yeah, well, you know, it was a little out. This guy, one of them was a bit awkward, you know. He just kept wanting to insist his idea about politics and we were just talking about something else, you know. You know, I'm being, you know, talking in, you know, in, in the phrases, but it's like that musically. So you can go jam there, you know, and, you know, me playing all these kinds of music, you know, I get it fast. Sometimes I'll see, okay, these guys are just, they want to play some just straight ahead tunes, you know. Or today at Kaza, it's just complete free jazz. But it's not crazy free jazz, it's groove free jazz, you know, you know what I mean? So, so you, you know, you have to be able to read that there. Yes. Which is, yeah. it, it is cool, you know, and it's very cool. But, you know, if it, if, it, it's, if it doesn't suit you, that's what's cool. You just sit down and chill because it's a big enough spot. And you can just go and just talk with guys and not play, which is very cool, too, to not do. <laughs> so you can sit, sit and appreciate the place, you know. Well, and, and I also, I have fond memories of playing games of chess. Uh, at oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember we played a few games of chess. It was really fun. Yeah, yeah. Well, you see, that chess is not my thing so much, but there's a lot of je chess addicts over there, like intense, you know. But, uh, yeah. but that's a social club, you know. It reminds me of, you know, if you, it's, you can think of an image of Cuba, like of old yeah. guys sitting in a park playing chess or dominoes, you know, and, yeah. and just, you know, kicking the can and talking about the stuff. And, it's, you know, that's what the casa is, you know. So Definitely. you go there. You know, you I'd go to a jam, but I wouldn't necessarily play. I mean, I'd hang and talk with the guys and then see what's happening, and it'd be just as satisfying. You know? Definitely. Well, and I mean, uh, as well, like it, it kind of reminds me of a salon, you know, like in in the in the French style of of you know, like you know, you'd you'd have like a gathering of you know of artists or or you know, or the intelligentsia or or you know the gathering of. I don't know, people of a certain inclination and, and like Casa, it's like a salon, but like, 
except like without the rules of a salon. So like, you know, you've got this great intersection of people that, you know, in any other context, it'd be like, why are these people hanging out? But at Casa, it's totally natural, you know? Yeah. You know, like that, those, those rules or those boundaries that you'd have, they sort of melt away. They, they fade into the background and people are like, people are like, okay, you're here. So, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to see, like, I'm going to see what this is about. You know, there's that, yeah. there's that. Yeah. Well, that, and I think you really got the casa that, you know, this, you, you really have, have got and understood the vibe and the, and the whole on that place. Cause just what you say is, is also, Especially in the times we're living now, you know, where there's, there's still a, a big social pressure that's that's that everyone plays, you know, you know, and it's nice to go somewhere and everyone knows that you go there, well, you leave it at the doorstep, you know. Yes. Everyone is there, and if you're going to go in there, well, you're you're open-minded, and you're going to let people be, and uh, people will, you know, listen to you, and you know, this is this is why we like that place so much. You know? Definitely, definitely. Um, and, and I mean, Simon, who I think Simon, the bass player is like, uh, he's yeah. like he was one of the, uh, he, him and his girlfriend, by the way, do you know what the name Madame Est really means? Like I, I've been trying to, I, like, I understand what it means. Well, I get the joke, but like, like, <laughs> well, no, but it, it's cause you, you have to say it with the right intonation. It's Madame Est, you know, which is like. Like, damn it, man! You know, <laughs> you know, but uh, no, that's her. It's very, uh, you know. So and the way the way it's written is mad amnesty, you know, mad amnesty, you know, mad amnesty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, well, uh, so I'm. Yeah. Anyway, I, I guess butchering the pronunciation, you've got got to start somewhere, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I know. Anyway, we won't even play that game. I'm not going. You have some heavy names from where you come from, too. <laughs> we, like, we won't play that game. Mais mais je parle français très bien pour une. C'est pas ma langue maternelle, mais mais je je pense que je parle quand même bien. Mais tu avais pas le choix parce que si tu voulais aller à la Casa Obscura, tu tu devais tu devais parler français. <laughs> oui, c'est nécessaire. Um, oh, so yeah, and 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 um, yeah, and I wanted to I wanted to ask you about uh, you know pipe organs in Montreal. Like, do you do you ever go do you ever go listen to you know the the concerts at, for example, uh, Saint Joseph's Oratory? Um, uh, unfortunately, not. You know, I've never uh, never be a tendency to go there. I you know I've seen a few. I have some friends who are organists, but. Uh, you know, and obviously there's a big uh, organ company from Quebec also. Yeah, uh, Casa Band. Yeah, yeah. So, but uh, no, so no, I haven't. I mean, I'm not, I'm not uh, inclined to see a concert like that. I mean, I like it, but I will. I prefer to see something else on when I have free time for that. For sure. Yeah, that's that's totally that's totally fair. Um, mm -hmm. And and you you played. I mean, you played at a lot of jazz festivals, right? Like you 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 played. Um, uh, you played at the, um, you know, at the Montreal Jazz Festival and a whole bunch of others as well. And, and you've done like quite a lot of international touring. Like you, you've gone to um, a lot of different places. I was, I was reading like, you know, that, that you've been to Europe, you've been to, you know, Monaco, all kinds of places, different places yeah. to do all this like touring. And, and that's really yeah. interesting. Uh, so, so what, like, um, like what are the different vibes that you get at all these different places? Like, uh, do you change how you play or is it, is it always like, you're, you know, when you go wherever you go, it's like. Oh no, no! But you see, that comes back from the initial discussion there, because you know, music. You you can't change how you play. You need to be who you are. That's you true. Know? That's, that's true. You know, so so uh, that's about, uh, what about, no. Like reading. What about reading the audience and like I don't know, like like trying to like I don't know, trying to play for the situation. Well, I mean. I, I used to try to do that younger, you know, to try and think I would please everybody, you know, like, I don't know if that's a good way to look at it, but to say, oh, okay, I'm going to try and do, you know, we do that very subtly now. I do it subtly, you know, I'll play my thing, you know, for example, uh, I won't try to please a crowd because I think people read through that, you know, it's like if you see someone who, do, who just tries too much, you're gonna be like, no man, you're really, you're just trying too much, you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know. 
So, so uh, no, I do my thing because because I believe the way you get there in the first place is because someone dug your music, you know. Yes. So you have to still do what you did. You can't change the way you play your music. You know? So, right. which, which so, but I'll see the crowd if I see someone enjoying a certain aspect, you know. And uh, as you know me, I'm not just about the music itself. I'm about the show. So, you know, I'm, I'll, I like to dance around a lot and smile and do stuff when I play, you know. Yeah, so if I see, that. if I, yeah, if I see someone's enjoying that and I'm making, a, you know, them having a good time, well, I'll, I'll maybe push a little more. I won't go overboard, but I'll just, just put another pinch of salt, you know, because I'm like, yeah, they dig it, you know. And they and they're happy to be there, and they know that's my job, you know, to make them happy. And if they paid money to see me play, definitely I'm gonna do a little bit more, you know. But but not not like to overplease, you know, not like to 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 just because I think oh if I do that they're gonna like me more, you know. Right. Because like, nah, yeah. like I you know I've always been suspicious of people that are too nice. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 But, yeah like you said, they try too hard, and then it's like yeah. it's not yeah. authentic. Yeah, and no. I think that question of authenticity is so important because, like, I mean, it is. Yeah, you, it is because I, you know, uh, I think you. That's what I love music so much because you can't lie. You know, you can't lie. And music speaks the truth. You know, so you can't say no. I'm a super nice person and play music because we're gonna hear straight through it. We're gonna like, yeah, you know what? I can hear your music. You have a dirty soul. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? You know, this, this is why I love music so much and why I try and keep a balanced life on my personal life, you know, also because it comes out because I always figured, you know, if I did dirty stuff, I like have like, uh, I don't know, like 20 girlfriends and, and screw over my friends and take advantage of situations and stuff like that. I think it'd have a bad karma and it come out in my music, Definitely. you know. <laughs> Which is for me why I'm very, very careful to be very straight because I'm like, no, I'm, you know, my music is just watching me. It's going to come out. You know, it's not going to be pure anymore. I'm going to be nasty. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, you know, I think um, uh, I think we were hanging out outside uh, Diazons and, and, you know, uh, and, and you gave me a little talking too. I think I think I, I, I tried to show off on the piano or something and then you gave me a talking to you set yeah. me straight. You know, and, and, and you did it in front of people too. So that was like an extra, like, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the extra lesson. You're like, okay, you didn't get the wink. So we'll, have, we'll, we'll give you the double wink now. <laughs> <laughs> so you're right. Like being, being like authentic and being straight with people is so important because like, yeah. It, it it'll allow it allows like for it allows for people to grow like you know because if if you, I think lie, so. if you lie to people or you or you know or you do the socially polite thing which is not to say anything then that person is never going to learn like that 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 lesson isn't going to be learned but and there's a choice it's like i say before you know the same way where the older guys uh, made the decision that they should tell me what up you know musicians will you know I, I won't go up and tell the first anyone who comes up on stage you know does a mistake and say oh no that's not what because because you know it's not but some people you know that they really have it and they really love it and they and it's just that they're just a bit on the wrong path you know and you're like so those people you'll just take the time and put them back because you know, it's worth it because you know that you know that they're special and they love music and they're going to continue so if you do it you know yeah. but it's it's one in a million you know because there's very few i think uh, pure musicians that are left now you know the people who really really play because they really love it you know because that's that's what they do there's nothing else you know so would would you would you tell justin bieber well, hey, I don't, I can't judge. I mean, he, he's, he's smart. You know, he, 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 he got that tune that everyone loves and, and, you know, and, and has a nice place to live, you know, <laughs> I, I, I chose myself to do a whole bunch of notes and be stubborn. Hey, well, I'm eating spaghetti tonight again. <laughs> Man, 
man, you know, there's this funny joke, which is like, you know, a rock guitarist plays three chords for 10,000 people. And, yeah. uh, and, and uh, you know, jazz guitarist plays 10,000 chords for three people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you right now, it's a level playing field, bro. We're all playing just for <laughs> three people. <laughs> yeah. But then what do you think about the whole live streaming thing, you know, with, uh, you know, with things like Facebook Live? Because you've been doing it too. And I've been seeing your little, your sessions and they're great. You know, like you're just sort of like doing a live stream of your practice session or whatever. And it's really Well, it, it, yeah. Yeah. No, I've been doing it like as a, as a, how should I say it? Like a journal. Mm. You know, that's, that's how I see it. Because I'm not, you know, I'm not thinking, oh, I'm preparing a solo. I'm going to do a Facebook Live, you know. No, I get up in the morning and I put it on and I play whatever comes through my head. You know, sometimes it's fun. Sometimes it's a little darker. Sometimes it's, it makes no sense. Sometimes it does. But, you know, for me, the, the whole point is, look, you know, we're living something very intense right now, you know. And uh, for me, it's a musical journey of what I'm, I'm, and probably a lot of people also are, are living, and, uh, and that that's why I'm doing it, you know. And and you know, maybe uh, a while back, if if this clears up, you know, I'm gonna look back and you're gonna see like my my 300 Facebook live shots, and I'm like, oh my god, okay, I went through quite some phases there, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's it's it's. Uh, I think it's a great way to to sort of capture yourself in process. And actually, that's one of the things about this podcast, you know, I, I wanted to capture people in process. And I wanted to yeah. have the, you know, the kind of conversation you'd have over a coffee or a glass of wine rather than just yeah, yeah. sort of like yeah, a yeah. formal interview, because I think formal interviews are overrated, you know, yeah, yeah, you know, for sure, for sure. And, yeah, yeah. and, you know, I want to ask you about your dog, your dog is called jazz. So like, you know, <laughs> so how did how did that happen? Ah, there he is. Jazz, how did that happen, buddy? You give him a wink. There you go. You see? <laughs> <laughs> Jazz, what do you think of Afraz? You remember him? <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. He's the weird piano player. Do you remember him? Yeah. <laughs> 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 dogs are very good about keep, about being real. I've always had dogs. I love dogs. Yeah, yeah, they they really are. They're, they're, they're <laughs> and so know, I didn't give him a name. Sorry. My son named him. Your son. My son named him. Yeah. Nice. Well, I love that name. I mean, it's it's like I mean, he, he couldn't have got it more right. You know, a music, no. a, a, a gigging jazz player, a jazz bassist's dog. What, what's it, you know, like, what, what else could he be called, you know, like? Oh, I mean, I was going to call him bass, but hey. No, yeah, that, that would have been, that, that, that would have been, I think that would have been pushing it too far. Or maybe I could have called him, you got, got a gig. Got a gig, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people will see you like, got a gig? Hey, got a gig. Come here, got a gig. People are like, man, what are you doing? And I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> man, man, they, they, man, if, if, if people saw you do, doing that, they might, they might think you're actually, you lost your mind or something, you know? <laughs> oh, they know it now. It's fine. There's no question about that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I guess... Uh, to, I wanted to ask you about spirituality and how important your spirituality is in your music. I, mean, I know you're an atheist or like agnostic or whatever, but like, like I feel like you have a spiritual practice that informs your playing, you know? Mm. Uh, yeah, well, I, I mean, I, I, have, I think I feel connected to the, uh, the energy, energies, you know? Like I'm very, I'm very, I don't know if it's, but I'm very sensitive to, uh, to, to energies and, and major you know major feelings like this is like right now i can i know it like i know i'm super sensitive to all of this because i'm like oh my god you know i mean you probably know what i'm talking about like the overflow of weird energies in this pandemic you know it's like whoa. so that spirituality is is the uh, for me my music is like a filter for that Mm. So, so I use it on that way. It's like it's like it, it gets any happy and 
less happy feelings through my music. Right. Yeah. So on that level, I think is is that what you meant? Like, uh, yeah, yeah. That, I think I think you answered the question for sure. Yeah, yeah, you did. Um, yeah, and I mean it's it, it's such a different thing because I mean everybody's spirituality is so personal. You know, it's like, yeah. But but especially like especially artists like we you know we have our own inner worlds and and like and the and the art sort of expresses that inner inner world and that's why I think it's like. Being an artist is a very vulnerable thing because, like you said, you can't lie. You know, whatever whatever's in you is going to be expressed through the art. Uh, you know, there's there's that uh, well that risk that you take. You know. No. Um. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's good to keep some. But I, did we look? Hey. Um. Yeah. I think there was a bit of a problem with the connection. Yeah. Sorry, I had a mind fart, and I think it affected the Wi-Fi. Do you do you ever talk to your computer and like you know do what I want or you know or shut up or yeah you know, I don't know, like sometimes you know it's funny like you talk to the computer like it's a no 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 I refuse to we have a we have a we have a very nonverbal relationship well you know before the connection got all funky I, I was just saying like that that you know that vulnerability of being an artist you know um like it's yeah, it's, yeah. um but yeah i think i think uh yeah i think it's important to to to, to be vulnerable you know because like it, that takes courage you know much more much more than you know claiming to know something or you know or showing off or or you know or being a virtuoso i think being vulnerable and like that that that's really really important oh yeah and all the great artists are and i'm sure every one of them will say so yeah yeah so, so well, yeah, yeah man it's been such a pleasure talking to you thank you thank you so much for for you know for having this conversation with me my pleasure. Thanks for doing this, Afraz, you know, to keep it up. And uh, always, I like to see the stuff you're doing. And, uh, you know, you have a very nice artistic uh, path. And like I say, we know that between, our, between musicians, we can spot that, you know. You know, so we're like, no, no, you know, this guy's going to do it no matter what, no matter what anybody says, you know. <laughs> and, and, and that's what needs to happen. <laughs> well, th listen, thank you for for being a mentor and thank you for taking me under your wing in Montreal. You know, I really appreciate that. Oh man, you're a good dude. And uh, looking forward to crossing paths again. Yes, absolutely. It'll be a, it'll be a pleasure. So uh, yeah. thank you and, and pet jazz for me. Yeah, well, <laughs> <Bye>. literally. <laughs> Take care. <laughs>